on seismic base isolation in Turkey, design application and its spread. Today we have very eminent speakers uh, from Turkey, Mr. Yusuf Jahid, uh, from who is president and CEO Fusi Engineering uh, Turkey, and Mr. Ujan, who is general manager TIS Technological uh, Isolation System Turkey. And this session will be moderated by Mr. Alok Bhamik, who is immediate past president of IES Turkey. And we also have a very uh, important and uh, knowledgeable panelists, Mr. Vipul Ahuja, Mr. Rajiv Ahuja, Professor Masant uh, Massaga from IIT Delhi, and also uh, Sandeep Donald Shah. And this uh, uh, the event has been sponsored by uh, Miyamoto Design and Engineering uh, Consultants Private Limited. And I hope uh, this uh, uh, webinar will be very useful uh, in understanding what are the uh, technology behind base isolation systems and how it is being used in Turkey and elsewhere and also in India. Various issues related to base isolation uh, will be uh, presented and discussed. So I hope it will be very useful to all. And uh, Mr. Alok Bhomek, uh, uh, is a past uh, immediate past president of IES Trakti. And now let me introduce Mr. Alok uh, Bhomek uh, before he start the uh, session. Uh, Mr. Alok Bhomek is the managing director of a uh, very known, very well known British engineering consultancy firm, BMS Engineering Consultants Private Limited. And he has more than 40 years of experience in this area. And uh, he is also international uh, professional engineer and also fellow of of uh, Indian National Academy of Engineering. And he's an active member of various professional bodies like Institution of Engineers, Consulting Engineers Association of India, IES Trakti and Engineering Council of India. And he's also involved in various uh, standard making uh, organizations like BIS and IRC. And he's also uh, uh, working as a visiting faculty, as a guest faculty in various reputed engineering institutions. And he has also received many awards. Uh, last time he was awarded in uh, SB Joshi Memorial Award for Excellence in uh, Bridge and Structural Engineering. So, and he is also the Chairman Editorial Board of Quarterly Journal of Bridge and Structural Engineering, which is published by ING IEA BSc. He is a very well known and, thor and thorough uh, structural engineer, and I'm sure uh, he will be uh, moderating this session very, very effectively. And uh, this event has been organized by Indian Association of Structural Engineers, which is uh, basically a national apex body of structural engineers in India. And all prominent structural engineers in India are its members. And uh, this association basically uh, organizes a lot of uh, webinars, seminars, training programs, refresher courses, uh, for its members and others stu and students also. And also uh, we take up a lot of issues with the government uh, in the interest of structural engineers. So as such, this is a very active and vibrant body of structural engineers in India. And I'm telling you this because uh, many participants who are attending this webinar may not be the member of uh, IESTRACTI. So I will request all those who are not members of IESTRACTI that they should also uh, try to become the member of this prestigious association. Now I will like to hand over this uh, uh, to Alok Bhamik uh, to start the session. Alok Bhamik, please. Alok, am I audible? I think. Hello. Yes, Alok. I, am I audible? Yes. I think there is some problem. Anyway, I think there is some problem with my signal. My apologies. But uh, let me see whether I can continue. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Manoj. And good afternoon, friends. Welcome uh, to this webinar on a topic which is very dear to me. Uh, it is on seismic base isolation in Turkey, design application and its spread. And as explained by Manoj, we have two very eminent speakers today. We have with us Mr. Yusuf Zahid, who is the president and CEO of Fuji Engineering Turkey. 
and also we have mr urjan uschamur who is the general manager of tis technological isolation system uh, they will be delivering on the subject uh, as we all know friends the topic of the webinar is today uh, today's topic that is base isolation is an extremely topical in current scenario uh, the concept of base isolation technique for earthquake mitigation as we all know is fast gaining popularity all over the world and uh, our country is no exception uh, if you all may recall many of you must have attended several events in is truct itself on vibration control i think we have uh, we have given the importance uh, that is due to this subject uh, coming to today's webinar uh, one may wonder as to you know why we are looking at turkey for base isolation because if you note that today's topic is 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 basically base isolation and we would like to go through the experience of turkey uh, well uh, just a background is important here uh, in turkey the seismic isolation technology has been applied at a very accelerated pace uh, in recent past uh, particularly to you know new or retrofitted buildings and infrastructures uh, the process uh, started essentially after the uh, famous izmit or infamous uh, izmit earthquake which killed more than 17000 people in 1999 and thereafter several guidelines and codes were prepared Uh, uh to encourage and regulate the application of uh, base isolation technique yeah, as far as india is concerned we are aware that of late we have seen some progress in this field uh, if i if my if my uh, you know records are correct then we have about 10 buildings which are base isolated as far as bridges are concerned i know of only one bridge which is which is uh, under construction now with friction pendulum bearing uh, which uh, is an extra dose bridge uh, where i am also involved uh, we have an irc code which is published uh, a guideline on seismic where there is a chapter on base isolation and i also know that in bias we have a, a code which is part 6 of is 1893 which is in advanced stage of publication so uh, this is the right time for us to be how uh, turkey has progressed in the field of base isolation and let us take a lesson or two from their experience uh, other than the two speakers we also have an expert uh, panel with us we have with us uh, mr rajiv ahuja mr vipul ahuja professor asant masagar and mr sandeep donald shah in the panel uh, uh, all of them are expert in the field of base isolation they have done a lot of work and uh, post the presentation we will uh, have an interaction with the panelists as well as we will take up the questions from the participants all participants are required please field their question in the q and a box and not in the uh, chat box uh, with this opening remark i would like to now hand over the platform to uh, the two speakers first uh, by uh, to mr urjan uschamur followed by mr yusuf zahid but before i do that i have the privilege to introduce them uh, first mr urjan uschamur he has completed his uh, bachelor's degree in civil engineering at uh, metu in 2012 in 2014 he has graduated from m triple s being a structural earthquake engineering masters degree by two and iuss pavia he is still continuing his advanced studies in uh, metu as phd candidate in seismic uh, base isolation uh, mr urjan has been working in tis which is the only company in turkey and one of the few in the world that provides turnkey services in friction pendulum type of base isolation device since 2014 being in the company from the beginning he has experienced the technology design certification and application aspects of the industry thoroughly currently the general manager of tis he is an active board member 
in the Turkish Association of Seismic Isolation, that is called TASI, and a member of SSI. He is actively participating in the technical boards of standards committee and EN 151292. So I will introduce Mr. Yusuf Zahid after the presentation of Mr. Urjan. So may I now request Mr. Urjan to kindly uh, 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 floor is his and let him start the presentation. Mr. Urjan, please. Thank you for your kind uh, invitation and introduction of ourselves. So I will I will now share my screen and start the presentation. Okay, so I think it should be visible now. Please let me know if there is any problem. Yes, yes, it is visible. Uh, thank you. Please go ahead. It is visible. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for participating in this event. And uh, I hope it will be useful. Uh, I will, today, I will, I am planning to have like 30 to 35 minutes of presentation, including the topics uh, starting from uh, the company profile of this very shortly. Then I will go over again quickly on the base general concepts and uh, measured benefits of base isolation applications. And I will go, go to the applications in Turkey with some examples. Uh, then I will focus on pendulum type devices since that is our expertise. Uh, and I will mention properties, design, testing, uh, and site installation. So I will try to cover everything uh, I hope it will be useful. So the, the company TIS was founded in June 2014 and started its sales at the end of 2016. Uh, we here provide services from design to after sale services, all included. So it is like a turnkey uh, procedure. Uh, we are the first and still only friction pendulum uh, manufacturer in Turkey and one of the few in the world. Uh, we obviously have an active research and development department and we keep uh, introducing new, new techniques and new devices to the industry. Uh, all of our products are CE certified since we are almost in, in European Union and all of our regulations are based on that. Uh, we have four main products, single and double uh, so sliding surface, uh, curved surface sliders or friction pendulums. And we also have structural bearings with different types, pot bearings and spherical bearings. Uh, up until today, we have supplied more than 8,000 devices to 41 different projects. Most of them are uh, base isolation devices. We have performed almost 180 prototype tests uh, in independent and capable laboratories, the well-known laboratories in the world. Uh, we have almost 3,500 uh, factory production control tests uh, that, that are also performed in an independent testing laboratory facilities. Uh, after 2017, which is the date that we started our sales, we, we actively have uh, more than 70% uh, of, the, of the market in Turkey. So in a, in a very short time, we had to gain a lot of experience in this, in this area. Uh, we also have supplied uh, pendulum uh, devices in Italy, Iran, and Iraq. So before going into base isolation concept, it, it should be, I mean, performance-based earthquake engineering must be mentioned because it is directly related. Uh, so I'm sure you, you are familiar with this concept because uh, every, every uh, design engineer should uh, is already applying performance-based earthquake engineering if they are using uh, current uh, design codes. Uh, so the, simply to simply put or to simplify the concept, uh, it, the PBEE says that you <clears throat> you may have different performance targets for different levels of earthquakes. So for for the uh, minimum criteria that is defined usually in the seismic codes. Uh, if you perform conventional design, you have to 
assure life, life safety performance of any uh, structure. So uh, it may be enough for some cases, but uh, for some cases, for some special buildings, let's say, or depending on the client's wishes, it may not be enough. So you may want to have a uh, much more uh, resilient design uh, and, uh, and a better performance uh, during your during during any earthquake. So if that is the case, the, the top level of this application is uh, considered as base isolation. Uh, it simply says that your, your building, your structures will remain operational uh, after after strong ground motions. So it depends on the on the designer or on the client to, to assess the performance target and uh, set the limits uh, accordingly so that the base isolation devices can be designed to uh, satisfy those needs. So base isolation uh, is simply putting some special devices underneath the actual structure within its foundation to the actual superstructure, let's say. Uh, and it ensures that during any earthquake, the superstructure or the isolated part of the building or structure uh, is protected from the harmful effects of uh, strong ground motions. So uh, if, if the target is operational, uh, is to, is, if, it's, if the target is to keep uh, the structure operational after any earthquake, uh, base isolation is the actual uh, actually only uh, accepted and applied technology in, in the current uh, civil engineering industry. So the devices have high stiffness in vertical direction to simply carry the axial loads of the superstructure and very low stiffness uh, compared, to, compared to the other structural elements in the lateral direction. So that is, what, that is the reason uh, if we put base isolation devices underneath a structure, it, when the earthquake hits, the post-elastic deformation occurs only on the base isolation devices, protecting the uh, upper structure and keeping the upper structure as a rigid body, which means the inter interstitial drift ratios uh, are quite low in the upper structure automatically. Uh, compared to fixed base structure, uh, both the uh, floor accelerations transmitted to the upper part and interstellar drifts can be controlled simultaneously if, if you apply base isolation. What we simply do is we simply put the period of the structure around three to five uh, seconds, which indicates that we, we take, uh, let's say, one second uh, natural period structure and we move it to four seconds, which dramatically reduces the uh, accelerations. And also we induce additional damping thanks to these uh, material properties or hysteretic behavioral properties of phase isolation devices. That also adds uh, additional positive effects on the performance during the earthquake. So uh, we are able to reduce uh, the design forces on the upper structure significantly. Uh, this is the sketch, let's say, kind of a sketch prepared by FEMA, uh, and it summarizes the concept of base isolation in almost perfect manner. So if we check the first three uh, rows, we see that in the first one, there is a protective system, which is uh, drawn, drawn as base isolation. And in the second one, it is enhanced code. And in the third one, it is the basic code. The difference between enhanced and basic code is, uh, okay, you have, you have a code and you have some minimum standards to, to satisfy, but you may want to have a better performance. So you may in, include some other uh, special devices or some other protect, protective systems against earthquakes. So that is uh, what is defined here. Uh, so if, the, if we assume a design earthquake hits the uh, newly built structure, according to if the building is designed as a basic code, you will have 
uh, you will have damage. That's for sure because it, the, the, the structures are designed to have damage during strong uh, earthquakes. But it depends on it depends on actually nature of the earthquake. If if you will have uh, severe damage or kind of a low damage, but you will have the damage, so you will not be able to use that structure immediately after any earthquake. So. Uh, you may need to have some repairs in non-structural components, uh, even maybe some structural components. Uh, depending on depending on your design philosophy, you may even have to demolish the building entirely and rebuild. So uh, these are the possible consequences. If we assume enhanced code, the situation is much better, of course, but you will still have, uh, especially non-structural damage, you may still have some non-structural damage that would prevent you to use the building immediately after the earthquake. Uh, as for the protective system or base isolation application, the idea itself is to keep the building operational during and immediately after the earthquake. So the idea is not to stop its operation at all, and you should be able to continue uh, immediately after any earthquake. So if you consider initial building cost, of course, the, if you build with base isolation, you will have uh, more expenses at the beginning. But if you, if you, if you can uh, make a vulnerability analysis or, or actual complete performance-based uh, approach, then you will see after, after the earthquake, uh, you will have much more damage uh, compared to spent on repairing and uh, maybe operation losing the operational time, for example, for for the mall or for a mall, for a hotel, for a factory, industrial facilities, the downtime should be can be quite harmful after an earthquake. So uh, during the design or during the selection of the structural system or let's say protective system, all of the aspects of uh, earthquakes should be uh, taken into account. Uh, there are two short videos that I would like to show it. The first one is the shape table test. Uh, I'm guessing late 1990s or early 2000s. At the first part, the building is uh, on top of base isolation devices. As expected during the motion, the uh, high period motion occurring on the, on the uh, upper part and the components, the structural and non-structural components can be protected. Then they fix the base isolation devices to induce the all effects of the earthquake to the upper structure. As, as expected, the, the first one failing is uh, infill walls and the experiment is stopped. Uh, the second video is focus, we will be focusing on mostly uh, components and working principle of pendulum devices.
so the major defects of uh, base isolation devices after real cases, uh, I will uh, basically start with the Northridge earthquake in 1994. There were two hospital buildings. One of them was base isolated, the other one was not. Uh, and they experienced similar uh, ground shakings. One of them on the, on the right hand side, you can see the uh, actual uh, maximum floor accelerations that is measured in the, in the base isolated uh, hospital, which uh, reduced the accelerations by uh, almost 70%, uh, which, which protected the entire hospital building and keep, kept it operational. Uh, and on the left hand side picture uh, graph, you can see the schematic view of the uh, ground acceleration forces or simply uh, shear forces uh, in the conventional and isolated buildings. Uh, in one of them, the uh, forces reduced to 35% and the other one, it is on, on the contrary, it is amplified to more than 2.5 times. So <clears throat> as I have mentioned, base isolation is the only practical way to reduce intestinal drift and floor accelerations, which, pro, which allows us to protect both structural and non-structural components and the entirety of the, of the structure with everything inside them. Uh, there are some other examples from Japan. Uh, in, in 2011, Tohoku earthquake, during that uh, earthquake, uh, there were some base isolated and some not base isolated uh, buildings in the vicinity. So <clears throat> the, the measured acceleration values are reported like this. So in, if, we, if we compare isolated and non-isolated buildings, the difference is uh, at least five, six times the, the, uh, the acceleration values that the uh, building itself uh, feels uh, is reduced at least six times in, in isolated cases <clears throat> compared with the fixed based structures. Another, uh, another interview uh, with the residents of the uh, Japanese base, uh, homeowners resulted that the only uh, in, in during that 2011 uh, Tohoku earthquake, only two of the 29 houses Two of, two of them, in two of them, the furnitures fell down. And uh, in, in, uh, in the others, they didn't even mostly felt, mostly feel nothing. So uh, the protecting the structural and non-structural components is one thing, but the comfort, comfort level uh, and the psychology of people is another thing. So as I have already mentioned, the, usually uh, the application of base isolation starts with some important buildings such as hospital, historical heritage, data centers, bridges, viaducts, uh, some special uh, tanks. And then it goes to uh, other areas like malls, uh, hotels, uh, houses, and it is, it is like a uh, sequence of, of the application uh, areas. And there are three main types of base isolation devices that is being used in the field. Uh, high damping rubber bearings, lead rubber bearings, and friction pendulum type bearings. Uh, there are some application examples from Turkey, mostly hospitals, because I will mention the reason in, in a couple of slides. Uh, small or big, uh, there are a lot of applications in the hospitals in Turkey. A couple of historical monuments have also been uh, strengthened with base isolation technology. Uh, there are data centers, which is quite uh, prone to earthquakes because of its uh, contents. I mean, uh, the, the servers must be protected during, the, during and after the earthquake to ensure the continuous telecommunication and to uh, prevent any data loss during the earthquake. So data centers are another uh, building types that is being actively used. And also some bridges. 
in in bridges it, it depends on the design philosophy actually because most of the time uh, instead of base isolation some other techniques can be introduced to 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 have the seismic protection with, with the structural bearings and some additional damping devices something like that can also be uh, chosen uh, now i will quickly mention rubber based devices then i will leave that part to its experts because we are not the expert of uh, rubber devices. Uh, there are three types that is being used, low damping rubber bearings, high damping rubber bearings, and lead rubber bearings. Uh, to simply put, uh, usually, if, if we are considering base isolation, high damping and high damping rubber bearings and LRBs are uh, widely used due to because of their uh, increased damping properties. There is a short or small warning here, structural bearings, if it, if it, it doesn't matter if it is steel based or rubber based, they are not base isolation devices and uh, it, should be, it should be taken into account during the design because in, if, if it is a base isolation device, we should be seeing some visible hysteresis and visible uh, damping. Uh, structural bearings are a completely different topic, actually. So I will continue with pendulum devices. In a friction pendulum type seismic base isolation devices, the, the behavior of, of the motion uh, is determined by, uh, by the curved surfaces, basically. Uh, the the period of uh, of the motion depends only on uh, on the radius of curvature on the curved surfaces. So that is the that is the reason actually. The uh, you you don't need to apply any specific uh, design parameter to ensure that you do not see any torsion in the building because since the oscillation period only depends on radius of curvature, if all of the radius of curvature values in all of the devices are the same, then automatically the stiffness center became independent from the mass center of the building and you prevent any torsion during, during the earthquake shaking. Uh, so the, the curved surfaces also uh, increase the tendency of recentering of these devices to the, to the center point. So, it is, all, it is another advantage, but it also depends on, of course, friction and the value of radius of curvature. Uh, so the mechanical properties can be calculated with the formulas on the equations on the right-hand side, but these are some details that can be found easily on the, on the literature. Uh, but what is important is the mechanical properties of any pendulum device highly uh, depend on its vertical load, which also determines the axial working pressure, which is very important. Uh, radius of curvature and friction coefficient. These are the main design parameters of any pendulum device. And these are, uh, <clears throat> these are the ones that is determining the uh, hysteretic behavior of any device or the isolation system. As you can see, the behavior of pendulum devices are almost perfect match to bilinear. Uh, behavior by linear hysteretic, hysteretic curves, but uh, the initial stiffness of this bilinear curve is should be considered infinite. I mean, you cannot model it in, as infinite in the in the structural uh, program softwares, but in practice, it is almost infinite because of the uh, because the devices work on on the concept of uh, friction. So you have to overcome that friction to start in, until that overcome happens, you will have infinite rigidity. Uh, another important aspect of these devices is the maximum base shear forces, which is important also for, uh, of course, for the, for the superstructure. Uh, it depends many on many factors and it is, uh, it can be, it should be optimized during the design uh, between uh, manufacturer and the designer, actually. Uh, so it depends on the seismicity of the region, 
It depends on the axial load levels. It depends on the uh, friction coefficients and radius of curvature. Uh, of course, there are some limits to what can be achieved and what cannot be achieved. But it is also it is uh, they, those kind of limits uh, are valid for both manufacturer and the designer. So that's why designer and manufacturer should be working together to optimize the base isolation system. Uh, as I already mentioned, if during if if uh, the topic is friction pendulum, you do not have most of the times you do not have a torsion problem. Uh, the more, one of the most obvious advantages of pendulum devices is it can be applied on very low axial loads or very uh, high axial loads. So. Uh, very low seismic regions and high seismic regions. So uh, it can be applied on a bit on, on a more variant uh, types of structures. As I have already mentioned, it is almost a perfect mesh to bilinear. So it is quite easy to model, model these devices. It is a, it is a kind of advantage usually for the designers. Uh, aging resistance, since it is the the well-known materials are usually used in these devices. Uh, the aging behavior is well well known, let's say. Uh, <clears throat> and these are the most, let's say, important uh, aspects. As I have already mentioned, the designer and manufacturer should be working together, uh, should be working in harmony, let's say, because at first, the performance targets of the buildings uh, are decided. So maximum base shear and maximum displacement limits are determined mainly by the designers, depending on the acceleration spectra and seismicity of the region, of course. Uh, but in any case, the manufacturer would provide uh, the devices to, to design their devices to successfully satisfy those performance targets. In order to do that, we uh, choose or arrange or calculate uh, radius of curvatures and friction coefficients. Friction coefficient calculation is also depending on, depends on the axial load distribution on the devices. So it has another step. But in any case, the design parameters of each, each project, the isolators are uh, designed and uh, manufactured specially. I mean, one design that is suitable for one project, most of the times do not match the other, other projects. So you have to design uh, project specific. So it is like tailor-made. Uh, so that's why each, each uh, structure is special and but what kind of device distribution uh, that should be used to satisfy its performance limits. The, the design of phase isolation devices differ from one project to another. So getting back to Turkey's application, uh, in order to make a base isolated building happen, we are following these steps, these steps basically. It starts with soil survey. It is obvious. So then the seismologists Take the, take the role and uh, some site-specific site specific probabilistic seismic hazard analysis uh, are performed, done for that specific site. Then there is a control step, uh, like a peer review uh, of PSHA. After that peer review, uh, once the site, uh, once the seismicity of the, of the building is uh, decided, then the preliminary design of the structure is being performed. Some preliminary analysis are, are uh, done with the selected isolation, isolated properties. Then after, after a couple of iterations and a couple of trials, uh, and also with the, with the actual nonlinear properties of the uh, manufacturers, the nonlinear time history analysis are being performed. And the final design of both seismic base isolation devices and the isolated structure can be completed only after that. We have also a second peer review at this stage, uh, 
that the second peer review includes structural analysis, base isolation design, and testing of base isolation devices. So it is it it has a the, the second peer review has a control over all of these procedures. Uh, after that control, the manufacturing tests and site installation and the completion of the structure uh, can be continued. Uh, there should be some specific uh, mentioning of tests at this point. Uh, I have again put uh, testing procedures from our design code, earthquake design code. The top one is the prototype testing procedure and the bottom one is the factory production control testing procedure. It is very similar to ASC actually, uh, but the idea is <clears throat> to, in, in, in a, uh, on the devices that has the same uh, properties, material, dimension, everything should be the same, uh, that should be, that will be used in the actual structure. Uh, two of them uh, are uh, tested according to prototype test procedures. So in these tests, different axial loads, different velocities, different displacements are being tried and around 20 to 25 different uh, testing steps are being done on the same device, which uh, tests every possible load combination, which aims to test every possible load combination on the base isolation devices. So uh, after these tests, the design of those devices uh, can be uh, approved, actually. Can the devices uh, show that it, is, it, it behaves as, if, as, as it is uh, designed? So that is the reason we do prototype testing. On the other hand, on factory production control tests, it is, it is very simple, very simple tests. And it is only to check if there's any problem with the production, mass production. Uh, most of the time it is uh, tested. I mean, not all of the devices are tested in factory production control tests, but it depends on the country. In Turkey, it is 30%. In US, it is 100%. In Japan, I think also 100%. According to European regulations, it is 5%, but the procedure is kind of different. So uh, it is to check that production continues as planned. So uh, there is no flaws, there is no, nothing wrong, and it, these devices will be, it can be uh, trusted. It is something like that. Uh, so I will show you some prototype test videos in different laboratories. The first one is from Italy. Uh, EU Center Laboratory in Pavia. And the device information is, test information is shown on the right hand side. Because of the limitations of most of the laboratories, uh, these tests can only be done in, in uniaxial. So there is no biaxial or clover leaf shape tests anywhere. So uh, the second one from Caltrans laboratory in San Diego. And uh, what is important here is the very high velocity and very high, one of the highest uh, displacements is being tested. And this test is, for example, one of the 20 uh, continued tests. So this is the another, this is another laboratory, which is in Turkey. Uh, and the displacement is again 560 millimeters, kind of high, let's say. Again, the, the testing procedures and the tests are uh, very similar to each other, only the Excel loads, velocities, and displacements are changing in between. In the end, we get some results like this. And we compare those results with our theory. So uh, there are, of course, some fluctuations in the, to the actual uh, design value. But if it is in the acceptable range, then the device is being uh, approved. 
so that is the reason we, why, why we um, do the prototype tests. Uh, finally, I will mention some uh, important aspects in the site installation, especially for, base, uh, for friction pendulum devices. Uh, firstly, there may be some different uh, installation techniques that uh, the manufacturers or the contractors can be, can be using. But this is what we believe is the best solution, and this is this is what we apply in our uh, projects. So at first, we <clears throat> we apply uh, the anchor elements that that, that is uh, designed to to remain in the concrete uh, building. So in order to do that, we use some templates to attach them on the uh, formwork of the columns or pedestals anyway, then, we, then the, then the con uh, concrete is poured. And these anchor elements like bolts and anchorage uh, dowels remain in the, in the uh, concrete. After that, we put the device, a uh, base isolation device on top and pour the grout uh, underneath it. There is one very, very special thing here, the fullness of the grout layer. It is very important. Uh, you have to have almost perfect fill of the grout underneath the base isolation device, because if you do not have, or more dangerously, if you have some uh, big holes, especially at the center points, when the superstructure is loaded on, on the base isolation devices, you will have some uh, bending damage on backing plates, base plates of base isolation devices. It is in inevitable. It, is, it doesn't matter how thick you make the base, uh, plate thicknesses, because if the grout is not applied properly, then there will be some empty uh, sections underneath. And uh, the steel simply cannot resist that uh, that force on, on top of on top of the devices. So, in order to ensure that the, the, the same quality is being continued all over the project, we from some from time to time, let's say one in each ten devices, one in each thirty devices. It depends. It depends on the application actually. Uh, after we apply the grout layer, one day after that we. Take, it, take the base isolation device out. We take the photo and some, with some image processing, the fullness, fullness uh, of the grout layer is being measured and reported to us. Uh, the target, usually the target for us is 95% fullness at the center and 90% fullness in the, in the general uh, overlay of the, of the uh, grout layer. Uh, after that, uh, the, the other, uh, the, the superstructure part of the construction can be continued in order to do that. Uh, there is also a special step that is applied in this part because uh, when you apply the former on the top, uh, you also have to ensure that uh, the concrete um, liquid do not go go down on the on the base isolation devices. So you apply some special uh, special material there to prevent any leakage of the concrete. So this is the general view uh, of, from the construction site of a hospital in in Turkey, and this is the general view of the isolation floor that is not that is that is designed only for base isolation. Uh, also, <clears throat> an example from retrofit, it is a historical structure that is being held on top of the hydraulic jacks. And we simply put some new uh, foundation underneath and put the base isolation devices there. Uh, and the top uh, reinforcement, and then there will be pour concrete pouring and removal of the hydraulic jacks. Uh, finally, there are some 
important details actually that needs to be considered. Uh, maybe not even even if it's not by structural engineers duty, it should be considered by some people. Uh, because when you <clears throat> build a base isolated building, uh, you will have some problems to overcome. One of them is the space uh, around the perimeter of the building. One of them is details of uh, gas lines, uh, power lines, uh, everything, every every piping. So uh, you have to consider uh, these details should should be considered and the uh, hinges on on the on the on the pipes or details uh, on the, the isolation floor uh, should be uh, taken into consideration. Uh, if if any mistake at this point or any uh, misjudgment, then the other things that you do perfect it doesn't matter because if there is a gas leak after an, after the earthquake in an isolated building, then you will not be able to use it. Or more dangerous, you will have some blow-ups, and it is not <clears throat> it, it, it is not something that uh, should be present or there shouldn't be that kind of risk. So I thank you for your time and interest. Uh, I hope I'm in my time. Let's see. I think yeah. So, yes, uh, you are in time, and thank you very much, uh, Urjan, for such an excellent uh, presentation, uh, covering practically the entire gamut of uh, you know pendulum type isolation bearings. You have covered right from the general concept and benefits to the application in uh, Turkey, uh, then uh, also the testing of the isolators, and very very importantly. You covered the site installation and the detailing, the final aspects of it. Very well uh, covered. Uh, uh, I would request you a lot of questions. Uh, I think, uh, Mr. Urjan, your presentation has invited a lot of questions, which shows that the participants are quite active. And may I request you that uh, while uh, during the presentation of Mr. Yusuf uh, Zahid, if you can answer some of these questions. The balance questions we can take up after the uh, presentation. But if some of the questions can be answered by you in the chat, uh, in the Q&A box, uh, that would reduce the uh, number of questions uh, later. Thank you very okay. much, Mr. Urjan. And now uh, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Yusuf, uh, uh, who is our next uh, presenter. Uh, Mr. Yusuf Zahid is having uh, 35 years of working experience. He worked seven years in Japan on the design of various uh, structural projects related to earthquake risk. Yusuf has extensive experience in high performance earthquake engineering and the design of energy dissipated critical structures, including tall buildings, base isolated hospitals, data centers, coastal and marine structures, and retrofitting with very innovative and cost-effective solutions. His native langu language is Turkish, and he is also fluent in Japanese, French, and English. Yusuf holds Master of Science degree in Structural Engineering and is a member of Japan and American Society of Civil Engineers, Japan Society of Seismic Isolation, International Association for Bridge and Structure, uh, that is IABAC, Earthquake Engineering Research Institute, that is ERI, and Council on uh, Tall Building and Urban Habitat, CTBUH, uh, as a performance based seismic design uh, working group member. So, with this brief uh, uh, you know, background of Mr. Yusuf Zahid, may I request Mr. Yusuf? Kindly take the floor and make his presentation. Thank you for this nice introduction. Um, I just want to make sure I am heard uh, according to Is that right? Yeah, loud and clear, Mr. Yusuf. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay, I'm glad to that. 
my presentation is uh, practice speaking uh, more related to from the uh, big perspective because I would like to uh, transfer my knowledge and uh, experience um, from, from the viewpoint of applicability, applicability of uh, base isolation uh, to uh, also four buildings if it's possible. And I want to show and explain how uh, the uh, widespread of uh, base isolated buildings is possible and what kind of uh, events and uh, uh, there are uh, triggering uh, the widespread process and uh, is it important monitoring uh, all these uh, uh, critical structures yes but why i would like to explain this but uh, before uh, continuing to my presentation i would like to emphasize that Base isolation technology is not a new um, know-how. It's, it's not new. Um, if you go to China or Japan, uh, you may see uh, some cultural heritage buildings already uh, constructed with base isolation technology, which is um, older than 2,000 years ago. It is surprising to see that our ancestors already solved this um, uh, problem uh, in high seismic areas and uh, uh, that's why we have learned from them uh, to use this technology and uh, we just add some added values uh, that's all uh, so my presentation uh, is uh, related uh, shortly with uh, about Fuji engineering and uh, um, the the, the uh, experience big earthquakes uh, triggers the uh, uh, widespread of uh, base isolation, uh, especially in Japan and also Turkey. And uh, you may um, uh, expect uh, how uh, it's going to happen in India. And um, development of uh, base isolated buildings. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting to it see how it's uh, widespread and uh, is it really possible to apply them uh, in four building applications because most people uh, they, they think that uh, it is um, unbelievable uh, to apply to uh, four buildings uh, especially from the uh, viewpoint of uh, overturning uh, problem and uh, before uh, yeah, uh, about Fujian Gring. Uh, Fujian has been active in Turkey since 1999. The firm operates in providing high-performance structural systems as an EPC contractor. The company has innovated structural technologies and earthquake engineering know-how developed in the high seismic risk countries such as Japan, California, and uh, Canada. Business areas shortly composed of EPC, engineering procurement construction, project development and construction management, disaster stress reduction, high performance earthquake engineering, structural health monitoring and earthquake response, retrofitting with uh, energy dissipating devices, which refers to without business interruption, more or less, temporary, emergent, and long span bridge systems. And uh, before continuing to my presentation, I would like to show uh, for earthquake recorded from long distance and showing the tall buildings. And uh, let's see how they behave uh, under such a big earthquake, magnitude 9, uh, even if it was more than 300, uh, 300 kilometers away, but due to long distance effects, we can see how four buildings are behaving uh, due to long distance uh, uh, effect. And uh, we will see also uh, a, a special uh, four building in the next slide. Let's see. Thank 
I'm sorry for <laughs> the, the volume of the sound. I forgot it was too, too much. Uh, but I would like to show you, uh, if you have noticed, uh, the uh, four buildings, uh, the top level, they were uh, moving at least um, exceeding uh, one or two meters. Uh, so uh, this is uh, really huge. Uh, but uh, this building, um, if you uh, keep, uh, if you receive the copy of this presentation and uh, rewatch uh, the video, you will uh, notice that uh, this whole building doesn't move at all because it's base isolated building. And uh, in fact, that is the uh, building, experienced Tohoku building, uh, Tohoku earthquake. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, an education building where these students uh, did not even notice they had experienced a uh, big earthquake, magnitude 9. And it was because of uh, base isolated uh, seismic isolation system. So um, here I would like to show you how base isolated buildings, uh, they were uh, widespread in Japan. Uh, until 1995 Kobe earthquake, there was no base isolated uh, uh, buildings. And uh, until after 2000 years, uh, more or less after five years, uh, it has uh, increased uh, until uh, until uh, Tohoku earthquake and after uh, 2011 Tohoku uh, earthquake, the number of uh, buildings increased uh, enormously. Uh, in the meantime, I have to explain that uh, the uh, small size housing buildings are excluded uh, from this uh, diagram because in Japan there are more than uh, 4,500 uh, housing buildings, one or two story, uh, they are not included uh, in this uh, graph. Uh, this represents only uh, base isolated uh, uh, medium to, uh, uh, I don't want to say four buildings, but uh, this is including, uh, excluding uh, the uh, housing, uh, one story housing building, two story housing building. So uh, that graph shows how it was uh, widespread and uh, the triggering earthquake events uh, were Kobe earthquake and Tohoku earthquake. But how, what happened in Turkey? Uh, 10 years ago, uh, in 2011, uh, one city uh, experienced uh, a, a big earthquake in uh, this magnet 7.2. And this is the uh, picture you are seeing, unfortunately. And uh, this is the uh, uh, collapse uh, situation. And uh, this is the uh, another building uh, where uh, the uh, one state hospital, the one city uh, state hospital building that was destroyed after the uh, um, uh, forthcoming uh, small earthquakes. And uh, this picture, I would like to show you here, this picture shows the medical equipment uh, reserved in that uh, collapsed building. And the Ministry of Turkish, uh, uh, Turkish Ministry of Health Authorities, when they have visited the site, they have noticed that they have lost more or less 10 pieces of this kind of medical equipment is called 2S, and uh, the newly born babies, they are preserved inside this uh, equipment to, to, to support uh, their um, life um, actions. But the um, um, uh, Ministry of uh, the, authority, the authorities of uh, ministry, they have noticed that the value of 10 pieces of this kind of sensitive 
equipment, medical equipment, uh, it was more valuable than the cost of the lost hospital building. So they were shocked and uh, they have noticed that the content of the building could be more important than the structure itself. So that's why the uh, Ministry of Health, they decided to issue an order and uh, to, to make, make it enable uh, the, uh, the hospital buildings to be built in the high seismic region to be constructed based isolated because they have noticed that it is critical. However, we need to understand why seismic isolated building in Turkey is not common, it's not widespread. General opinion is seismic isolation system is expensive. In fact, 20 years ago, it was also expensive in Japan. So I would like to emphasize the lessons learned in Japan, then we can continue with Turkey. But according to the lesson learned in Japan, it was also expensive in the beginning in Japan. But uh, thanks to the obligation imposed on the application of seismic isolation in the public sector, e.g. hospitals, the system spread after performance proven. The, the, performance, the performance proven uh, in Japan was for the earthquake. It was Tohoku earthquake. That's why, that's why base isolation widespread due to experienced earthquakes. Similarly, in, in Turkey, uh, experienced earthquakes pushed the widespread of base isolation. Uh, but if we come back to the lessons learned in Japan, uh, in, in the recent 20 years ago, uh, it was expensive in the beginning, and after the obligation, it started to widespread after the uh, experience earthquake. But one thing is important in Japan, mass production has started. Japan is the only high seismic country where the mass production of the seismic devices uh, started. You cannot see this in Italy, you cannot see this in Mexico, you cannot see this in California, nor in Turkey. Uh, because it's not, how to say, it's not very common yet, uh, as much as uh, Japan. So, uh, because of mass production, the initial cost decreased in Japan, and uh, because of cost efficiency increase, the system has spread further. So, uh, considering the population of India and the uh, high seismicity of the country, uh, mass production can be considered in time similar to Japan, if possible. Uh, so, uh, if we uh, look at the case of Turkey, Turkey is currently at the second step compared to Japan. But uh, for India, maybe at the very beginning somewhere here. So um, you can uh, estimate uh, the uh, progress of uh, seismic isolation development of India according to the, uh, this uh, steps, uh, considering Turkey is at the second step right now. In fact, uh, the application of uh, seismic isolation in Turkey has started in 2013 with the circular issued by the Minister of Health with hospitals and uh, spread, widespread, continuous with uh, applications with data centers in 2017, but it is not obligatory, it's not mandatory. Uh, the initiative belongs to the business owner. So I think it's very important the, to increase the awareness of the business owner because not only the uh, hospital buildings, but 
if we consider the IT facilities, IT facilities are also critically important. For instance, in Japan, uh, there's a, a very significant uh, example, the uh, bankruptcy of Sanyo. And uh, it was uh, because of uh, uh, IT facility of Sanyo, um, they, 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 if, if that facility was very regulated, it would be possible to, to see Sanyo in the business, but unfortunately it was sold to another uh, company as far as I know, it's Canada. Anyway, uh, right now in Turkey, we can see that also the other structures like, like residential buildings are being constructed with base isolation and the time is 2020. So if you come back, if you look at back to 2013, we see that it, it uh, just uh, in seven years, uh, Turkish society embraced to utilize base isolation technology in residential buildings, which I think is very important. So this is a, an, an example. This is a huge uh, mega hospital uh, building. It was designed with our um, uh, sister company. And uh, this is um, including 973 isolators. And all this superstructure is floating on a single diaphragm. Similarly, the IT industry has recognized the importance of uh, the business sustainability and this is a uh, data center and uh, the business owner has uh, noticed that the data inside the building is critically important. As in the example I gave, in one earthquake, uh, the medical equipment was important to preserve, uh, but for an IT center, uh, the data cabins um, are uh, important for the sustainability of the business. And now, uh, nowadays, residential buildings, this is an, an example, um, an example, uh, in, in Turkey, uh, recently uh, design is finished and the, the construction is expected uh, to be started very soon. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> is it possible to apply uh, core buildings, uh, the base isolation also in core buildings? Uh, it is uh, possible. Um, but what, what are the concerns uh, uh, making people afraid? Uh, why such as the high rise buildings are not common? Uh, there are, uh, generally speaking, three reasons lack of experience, high cost concerns, and uh, other uncertain, uncertainties such as know how. Uh, Base isolation application in four buildings involves some challenges, such as how will vibration control be provided against earthquake or wind? Or how about the drift? Is it possible to be managed? Yes, possible. And uh, how about the safety against overturn? This is the most uh, concern. And uh, is it possible to replace the isolators under uh, excessive vertical load? Because four buildings, uh, as you can imagine, uh, the vertical load, the gravity load is uncomparable to the horizontal structures. So the replacement concern is a very rightful question. And also high material quality uh, is also uh, another concern. Why base isolation is effective for core buildings? Answer is because the theory of base isolation is to extend the natural period of the building. But uh, for a core building, uh, the natural period of the core building is already long enough to apply base isolation. And uh, the second is mode shape and damping points are uh, interesting, let's see. As I said, natural period of uh, four buildings 
is already uh, close, uh, I, I mean, the normal seismic resistant building for four buildings, the period of the structure is already same for the base isolation, so this is an advantage. The secondly is mode shape is not issue, and the mode shape of the base isolated structure is uh, another uh, advantage. But the third point is we can control, uh, we can increase uh, the damping at the base isolation because the normal uh, seismic resistant building has only limited damping with 5% because of uh, damage of the building itself during the earthquake event. But uh, thanks to base isolation uh, at the isolation level, uh, more or less 20% damping uh, becomes efficient to control, to decrease uh, the transfer base isolation to the superstructure. How is it possible? Uh, I wanted to provide some uh, uh, technical details the upper part represents normal seismic resistant, resistant building and the lower uh, uh, figures represent base isolated structures. And uh, let's imagine that uh, for normal resistant building, the uh, gravity lot, uh, the, the mass uh, of this structure, uh, let, let it become 4W, and for base isolation, it's again, it is 4W. Uh, and the vertical gravity reactions is 2W, 2W, and 2W, 2W, it's the same. But when the uh, horizontal earthquake, let's imagine it is 10% of uh, the mass uh, for the normal seismic resistant building. If it is 10% uh, of the uh, mass, uh, for the base isolation structure, it can come to down 5%. So we can reduce uh, the base shear uh, at least 50%. So what happens when we reduce the horizontal earthquake force? When we look at the reaction force for the normal resistant building uh, under under uh, this horizontal uh, earthquake force, the reactions becomes 0.4 W and 3.6 W for the normal resistant building. However, under base isolation building. Uh, the uh, reaction force uh, becomes an advantageous case. Uh, you see, if the horizontal force is acting from the left side, just in case, uh, the uplift force, uplift force uh, becomes uh, zero point four W. But under base isolation case, uh, structure has much capacity for uplift force, which is the uh, biggest concern. On the other hand, base isolated four buildings also provides uh, cost advantage. And uh, uh, this is the conventional building at the left hand side. And uh, this is the Situation was happening during the event, earthquake event, and the right hand side, this building is base isolated structure, and the, the people are uh, enjoying uh, during the earthquake uh, event, uh, but that may be uh, a kind of exaggerated situation, frankly speaking. But I would like to uh, show that for the uh, conventional building, there may be requirement of this vertical column for uh, normal seismic resistant buildings. However, for base isolated buildings, it can be get rid of. You know, the, 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 the column may not be required here because of 
the advantage of uh, horizontal uh, seismic uh, uh, forces. And when we compare this structure to this structure, we can see that uh, no columns here and the sectional beams decrease in concrete and therefore we can see that decrease in concrete and, and also reinforcement amount uh, becomes a, an advantage. Um, in fact, for a feasibility study we conducted in, uh, in Istanbul, according to the Turkish workmanship, um, we have noticed that for a Turkish war structural system, uh, the cost of base isolation devices offset uh, up to 30 story buildings. I think this is an important finding, and in India, this can be slightly more or less uh, similar value. So um, the, I think uh, the, the uh, concern that the base isolated four buildings becomes too expensive is not uh, correct uh, in uh, every case. So I, I, I would like to show you some uh, real examples because uh, still some people may uh, not believe that it's not, uh, it's not possible. This is the uh, 18th floor uh, tall building applied in Japan. Uh, most of them, they are applied in Japan. This is 41 floor. This is the uh, 26th floor. In fact, this is the building I showed during the uh, video at the very beginning of my presentation. And uh, this is the building is the uh, 34th floor. And this is also another 34 to 40, 40 floors. And uh, these are the structures with uh, 52 floors. This is uh, really challenging. 53 floors and this is 35 floors. So there may, there may be a question, how far can we construct four buildings with base isolation? Frankly speaking, um, I may say that as long as we keep the proportion with the short distance, short width of the structure compared to height, if the height is uh, 8 and the width is W, height W ratio, if it is not exceeding 3, I think it's, it's fine. But depending on the seismicity of the region, uh, that, that ratio can be increased up to 4. Uh, uh, as long as we control, again, the uplift forces, um, we can uh, increase uh, this ratio uh, depending on the architectural uh, conditions. Um, while I am approaching to my uh, to the end of my presentation, I would like to emphasize: uh, Is it important to monitor the base isolated buildings? Yes, I think so. Uh, it is a uh, critically important uh, to uh, to verify the performance of uh, buildings um, just after the earthquake to make sure that the structure is uh, usable. Uh, I would like to come back to this slide again, but we need to understand what what does it mean? What is it such a health monitoring system? In fact, it is a system that provides information about the current state of the structure. It is a system based on data collected by accelerometer sensors placed in an existing structure and the processing of these data. And the third is this system is a common subject of earthquake structural and electronic engineering disciplines. Okay, what about the benefits? The benefit is important. The actual earthquake behavior of the structure can be monitored and it provides information about the usability of the structure just after the earthquake and it allows 
real-time earthquake records to be kept by the building owner. But why do we need to keep uh, the recorded data? I think it's important. And uh, sharing this information instantly with the related people, not only simultaneously, but also after it is important. Because if such kind of important building was not properly designed or was not properly constructed according to the details, as Mr. Urujan explained, uh, in uh, connect uh, in connection uh, details, um, there may be some other uh, problems uh, about the performance of this this building. Uh, if, if it can be possible, the structure can be can uh, collapse. Uh, in that case, uh, there may be some uh, um, legislative uh, problems to to clarify who is responsible for the collapse of these isolated buildings. <clears throat> is it designer? Is it the construction contractors? <clears throat> or the peer reviewer together? Who knows? But if the record is kept during the event at the site location, it is important to understand what happened because when we record the data, the record, the recorded data is not only recorded at the ground level, you see there's a sensor at the ground level, but there's another sensor at the isolated structures in addition to other floors, including the top level. So uh, these Two data, if they are compared to each other, we can know uh, the uh, existing measured uh, acceleration at the ground level, and uh, we can compare it with the decreased acceleration. And this shows how this structure has per, uh, has performed under uh, the decreased uh, acceleration. I, I'm sorry, I have already um, uh, exceeded my uh, 30 minutes, 5 minutes. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf, for such an excellent uh, presentation, giving a very broad overview of um, base isolation and its application in tall buildings. You started with development of base isolation buildings in Japan, how Japan has progressed, taken lessons from Japan. And you have also talked about the development of base isolated buildings in Turkey, uh, application in tall buildings. I particularly liked the way you presented, you know, in the form of questions, you put a question and then you are answering that. The excellent way of, uh, you know, uh, uh, presentation and particularly for those uninitiated like me, this was very useful. Thank you very much, Yusuf. Uh, I would now like to uh, go to the uh, to our um, eminent panelists, and I see that a lot of questions have been answered by Mr. Urjan. Thank you, Urjan, for uh, answering uh, the many questions. Uh, I will take up the Q&A questions from the Q&A uh, chat, uh, Q&A box. Before that, I would like to hear from our panelists. I will uh, start uh, with Vipul, Mr. Vipul Ahuja, who is the CEO, Director of Ahuja Consultants Private Limited, a, a licensed structural engineer of uh, California, USA, and a governing council member of Indian Association of Structural Engineers, a very eminent personality. He has a lot of experience in uh, base isolated tall buildings. Uh, Vipul, uh, what what is the takeaway from uh, this two excellent presentation? I think uh, the takeaway is that base isolation is now within reach. It should uh, 
you know we start using it actively uh first secondly the myth that it's not applicable to tall buildings is also uh, nicely been dispelled so i think that's a, another uh, thing that is uh, very useful for our society you know we should start implementing some high rise buildings as well uh, but at the same time uh, i i would like to also caution that um, you know there are studies that uh, you know uh, we should really be extra cautious about designing base isolated buildings if we are careless in any way or designing base isolated building infrastructure substance or anything it is better not to design it with the base isolation it is better than to design it without it so uh, each uh, whereas base isolation has a big huge advantage in continued uh, functionality uh, you know it is at the same time uh, you know uh, requires a lot of due diligence on the part of the engineer so i i would say that uh, you know it is something to be taken up but like uh, they are mentioning you know in turkey they have two or three peer reviews you know before uh, the base isolated building is built and those kind of checks are very much required you know without those checks and also uh, testing in the initial phase when we are in, in the our society we are uh, starting for the first few years before the confidence is built up i think 100% dynamic testing like the us is is uh, important okay. then gradually we can phase down till down to uh, lesser uh, you know routine tests but uh, at least in the beginning we should have 100% testing that will be very useful uh, in uh, evoking enough confidence and also you know having the checks is very important so that uh, you know we don't skim on uh, because there a lot of in india we don't have a structural uh, license kind of a phenomenon so a lot of builders can uh, you know put all sorts of pressure on the construction consultant to cut corners here and there because and uh, it comes down to the structural engineer to take a call you know whether to go ahead with the project or not at every step of the way you know which is unfair i think whereas if the checks and balances are available uh you know two three levels of checks are there then the structural engineer can take the bold step and say that they will not allow you know uh, that cutting of the corners so that's a very important aspect as well yeah vipul i agree with you i think uh, the industry needs to develop the capacity also we need to really strengthen uh, the structural engineering fraternity need to as as i think yusuf mentioned in one of his slide that uh, we are at the beginning stage we, we are still at a stage where base isolation is just picking up so it is time also parallelly we have to uh, build our capacity the, uh, the uh, as as the vehicle or the car is as good as the driver so uh, that point is well taken uh i would now go to uh, uh, professor vasant matsagar who is currently serving as the dogra chair professor at indian institute of technology delhi he has take earned his doctorate from iit mumbai uh, in the discipline of dynamic response control of structures and he has done lot of work in this field of base isolation he is also uh, a member of our IRC uh, B2 committee and he is reviewing the chapter on base isolation which is developed in Indian Roads Congress for highway bridges so professor matsagar your take on today's uh, presentation and kindly share your experience too yeah uh, thank you mr bomik uh, i hope i am audible yeah yeah you are yeah uh, first of all very nice presentation by uh, both the eminent speaker uh, from turkey they have shared their experiences of uh, building so many structures using the advanced base isolation uh, using the advanced base isolation technology in general and particularly uh, the use of some of the new isolation systems over the conventional isolation system 
uh, some of the uh, important takeaway from both the presentation and one of them most prominent one is uh, in turkey they have used based isolation for a large number of hospital buildings uh this should uh, prove as an eye opener for many of us here uh, we are still uh, uh, not giving that consideration that our hospital buildings which are lifeline structure should be base isolated and typically after the uh, any major earthquake like the bhuj uh, earthquake we start talking about uh, making most of or almost all of our hospital buildings base isolated but then after a few months or years we forget about it and even the new hospitals are being built large hospital multi story buildings of those hospitals they are all again with the conventional architectural design and not with the base isolation technology but as both the speakers have mentioned that uh, operational level of performance uh, is achieved uh, probably only to the seismic base isolation and not by any other uh, um, any other methods uh also in particular the sensitive equipment can be safeguarded uh, in the structure the contents in the structure are safeguarded only by using this isolation as compared to any other uh, seismic control device be it uh, any type of damper for that matter uh, because of the uh, very nature of the base isolated structure uh, how it performs during an earthquake event so some of the illustrations shown by uh, the speakers from turkey they have clearly shown that the secondary equipment or the sensitive equipment or contents within the structure are safeguarded much in a better way as compared to the uh, other uh, te uh, techniques or conventional architectural design of structures further to that uh, again in india we are yet to see the adoption of base isolation technology in another lifeline structure those are bridges Uh, as uh, bomik sahab has mentioned that uh, we are in the process of uh, writing that chapter on base isolation of bridges and uh, mr raju ahuja has uh, taken that leadership to uh, write this chapter uh, so yet uh, we are uh, uh, except that one bridge which bomik sahab has mentioned which is using the sliding isolation system our other bridges are yet to see the uh, base isolation the uh, third point that i would like to make uh, independent of these is uh, we are still uh, yet to see the uh, indian manufacturers producing the isolation systems in india i will be happy to uh, to be corrected on this matter if uh, there are some indian manufacturers who are manufacturing isolation systems indigenously within india this will bring down the cost uh, quite enormously and as the uh, one of the presenters has shown uh, the cost effectiveness of isolation system uh, vis a vis the conventional constructions uh, though there are some additional costs uh, that they have shown uh, uh, we have conducted some research on this matter and uh, in case if we are manufacturing the isolation system indigenously then i feel that the cost uh, will not escalate uh, probably uh, there are chances that cost may even go down as compared to the conventional uh, earthquake based on design of structures uh, another important point uh, made during the presentation by the uh, eminent speakers was the uh, the overturning effect and in particular they have uh, very nicely presented how base isolation can be employed in tall structures Uh, again uh, for some of us who are serving in the uh, core committees uh, this is a good example that uh, we can give that base isolation need not to be restricted only to the low rise or mid rise building base isolation can also be used for uh, high rise building as well in order to enhance their performance to the earthquake and my concluding point on this is uh, base isolation technology can be employed to achieve the uh, target performance in the performance based earthquake engineering and there uh, again uh, some of the illustrations given by both the speakers have been quite uh, quite useful for us uh, in order to adopt this technology uh, in india so with this uh, i once again thank both the speaker for the way they have explained it and i will be glad to answer if there are any further questions thank you professor um, for your excellent remark and uh, i would just like to clarify that as per as per my understanding there is a manufacturer in india who is uh, producing this um, 
high density rubber bearings lead rubber bearings etc i am not sure whether they are producing friction pendulum bearing but i am quite sure that they are doing this lrb and uh, ltrb uh, uh, also i think uh, your uh, point is well taken that the you know so far the understanding generally the feeling is that it is applicable for medium rise buildings uh, and tall buildings really the time period is uh, as it is low uh, high so therefore base isolation may not be effective but yusuf's presentation very clearly showed what are the other benefits in terms of damping and in terms of the you know displacement and all drift so i think that point is very uh, well taken so i now go to uh, our third panelist mr rajiv ahuja uh, who is an independent consultant uh, for bridges highways a governing council member of ias rakti and very active in indian roads congress he has been as professor matsagar mentioned he has been uh, instrumental in uh, modifying the clause on base isolation in indian roads congress which i think Uh, both professor matsagar and mr ahuja is involved he is also i think uh, involved in uh, bridges where friction pendulum bearing is being used one and the only bridge where he is both of us me and mr rajiv ahuja is involved so over to you rajiv thank you alok and uh, we had an excellent presentation from mr ahuja and mr yusuf it was very informative see mr yusuf explained that 20 years back they had a lot of reservation in using these kind of devices and so these are expensive and uh, what about the replaceability what is their longevity and durability during the service period of 100 years and how do we ensure stability of the structure so and quality of the material i think in india we still have uh, these apprehension at least most of our engineers and maybe builder community they still have uh, these uh, reservations and they feel uh, we have constructed thousands of uh, buildings and generally we are not using these devices why to use now what what is new see it takes a disaster to learn the lessons we are we have been lucky so far that in our major cities we have not faced that disaster once we face that disaster then we realize the importance of seismic isolation devices and i think we should learn from the experience in japan as well as in turkey and my opinion is we made it make it obligatory there should be a statutory law in certain high seismic zones and for certain types of building base isolation has to be made mandatory and then only mass production will start there will be improvements maintenance will improve unless we do that i think our builders will always be reluctant in using base isolation then i will uh, share my experience with a bridge over uh, river brahmaputra which is being constructed by epc contractor sp singla private limited and i am their technical advisor the bridge is 1200 meter long it's an extra dose bridge uh, with uh, five intermediate spans of 200 meter and end spans of 120 meter the initial proposal at tender stage was the piers were monolithic with the superstructure so when you design such a monolithic structure then and uh, uh, the uh, site specific spectra was developed by rook university and we realized that the seismic forces are 60% higher than the seismic forces obtained by irc codes we in irc code there are uh, four zones so this area in assam guwahati falls in zone 5 for which the ground acceleration peak ground acceleration is 0.36 g and it increased by 60% so with such a high seismic force it became difficult to design the pier and in our country well foundations are very common even now well foundation is 55 meter deep with a size of 10 meter by 18 meter when uh, if you don't do base isolation the size increase tremendously from 10 by 18 maybe 15 by 25 meter and the depth also increased to 65 meter it's not easy to sink such a deep well with such a large size and another disadvantage which we realized uh, in a integral structure there will be plastic hinges which will form at the base as well as at the top uh, at the junction of superstructure and pier now we design with the response reduction factor of 3 and plastic hinges may develop at top as well as at bottom but nobody really has seen i mean performance of plastic hinges once plastic hinges develop 
the structure will rotate and such a massive structure which rotates how do we bring it back how do we repair the plastic hinges all those apprehensions were there so we then discussed with the owner client and told them that the sizes of foundations are becoming unwieldy and you may end into a problem it may not be easy to repair these plastic hinges and we suggested seismic isolation devices they had lot of reservation because nowhere in india this has been done for any of the river bridges it took almost 5 to 6 months to convince them they also consulted lot of uh, institutions and we you know showed them some international references and uh, by using seismic isolation devices the forces have been reduced by almost 50 to 60% basically seismic isolation device increase the you know time period tremendously and because of damping the acceleration may come down by 40 to 50% so it's a big big advantage like mr uh, orjan also explained that acceleration could be reduced 5 to 6 times it's unbelievable so i think in future in bridges in uh, in high seismic zone i feel people are going to use it the first one is always difficult but in all future bridges in high seismic zone i am very sure seismic isolation devices are going to become very very common i, I think we should encourage that and that's how we will learn. thank you thank you rajiv i think uh, very well placed and just let me tell you i am uh, being involved in that same project uh, the cost reduction has been significant by use of uh, uh, friction pendulum bearing in that bridge and it is just not a question of uh, cost reduction the found it became feasible number one it became feasible to uh, design and construct such structure number two by using the base isolation we are we have you know improved its uh, seismic category from a you know uh, formation of plastic hinge to a operational design even after the major earthquake the 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 structure can be used without any repair and retrofit so in fact we have improved its performance uh, by providing friction pendulum uh, bearing there uh, now uh, i would like to go to mr sandeep shah sandeep shah has more than 30 years of varied engineering experience he is the md of miyamoto design and engineering consultants private limited he has masters degree in earthquake and civil engineering dynamics from university of sheffield uk he uh, he is deeply involved in the uh, performance based design i know him uh, for last uh, number of years and uh, i know how deeply he feels about the uh, performance based uh, design uh, so i would like to hear from him sandeep thank you thank you alok uh i'll i like to make two three points in fact most uh, eminent speakers and panelists have already made uh, very many of the important points but how, however i will like to add a few uh so presently i feel that india is at a cusp you know where we are going to step uh, into into a world of uh, performance based design and it is it is going to be a, a, a very very uh, big step Uh, for the country for the structural engineers and the for the community as such because once we do that we are looking at uh, you know having uh, structures that will uh, live through posterity uh, that will perform well and we we uh, don't have to look at damage and losses uh, even uh, through adverse events like earthquakes uh, uh, speaker uh, mr urjan brought out a very important point and he started his presentation by showing parts of the performance based design code and then linking them up with base isolation so it is fundamentally important now that we are uh, uh, have uh, going to produce a code or the code is likely to come out in the very near future on base isolation it should simultaneously be accompanied by a code on performance based design just having a code on base isolation will not take us anywhere in fact uh, 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 certain novices uh, may actually make a mistake uh, by wrongly interpreting interpreting certain clauses or uh, uh, principles so it is fundamentally important that both these codes come out simultaneously and whenever whenever in the world whichever project in either energy dissipation devices or base isolation are used 
both codes come into play so performance based design comes into play and the uh, code for base isolation oblique uh, energy dissipation devices comes into play we cannot deal with e just one code and design a uh, design a base isolated building so that's extremely extremely important to understand now the myth the myth that once we use technology our cost is going to increase that has been put aside by both the uh, eminent speakers uh, uh, so we we should now be looking at increasing performance and um, uh, uh, mr alok and and mr ahuja have given a, you a practical example of a bridge where technology has been used to increase performance and reduce cost uh, the same can be done with base isolated buildings uh, uh, too Uh, the same can be done with performance based design and i i remember how um, uh, passionate vipul is uh, you know for using technology to reduce cost give a safer product and uh, and uh, at at a lesser cost so we must we must start uh, uh, thinking on on these lines a very very and fundamentally important uh, uh, point that was made by the speaker is that there are actually three peer reviews when you go through a base isolated building the first is when you when you choose a hazard so that hazard is itself peer reviewed whether you are choosing the correct hazard or not second is when you choose the properties of the base isolator that means you have a superstructure and then you choose the base isolator properties that properties of a isolator get peer reviewed and third once you finish your total isolation design you have a final peer review which peer reviews the complete design and also peer reviews the prototype testing so unlike uh, 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 fixed base buildings where the peer reviewer comes uh, at uh, you know when the construction drawings are being issued over here the peer reviewer becomes a part of the project and he becomes a part of the project right from the start when when you decide on the hazard so that is again in indian context we need to understand that we need we guys need to change our mindset that once we are doing performance based design uh, this is what the involvement of a peer reviewer is going to be uh, i think then uh, uh, dr matsagar uh, professor matsagar has made a very very important point and that is commercializing this technology uh, for india so moment i think the moment uh, uh, the the uh, building developers building owners and the statutes uh, issuing authorities of the government uh, they they do their part the industry is going to fill come step in and fill the void so you will not have one but you will you going to have probably see a dozen manufacturers manufacturing base isolators in india Uh, but see presently where we are lacking is in the right in the initial uh, step that is the statute and the uh, uh, and the uh, building owners uh, trying to build high performance buildings uh, uh, so again as structural engineers i think it is our duty uh, wherever we get uh, opportunity we must put our point and and uh, uh, i think Uh, some uh, uh, somebody important or when the when the uh, 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 the suggestions go to the right person i think that statute is not far away uh, uh, that's that's all that i would like to add thank you uh, thank you alok thank you sandeep and i think you have uh, hit the nail and the head uh, absolutely right and i think uh, uh, in yusuf's presentation i saw one slide where he showed how things have progressed in turkey uh first the beginning then the obligation and then the spread and etc etc so we are probably at stage 1 and uh, if uh, i think many of you are aware that there is already an ndma publication which uh, talks about uh, base isolation or operational safety standard for hospitals uh, but that is unfortunately that is not a part of the code the minimum requirement as per the ias 1893 does not talk about the this statute 
so ndma guideline is just a guideline only still yet to be so i think the process is slow in india but i hope i am i am optimistic that in times to come things will uh, speed up and when it speeds up uh, in india i think it will be acceleration will be much more than many countries so we ha- also have in our panel uh, our president mr manoj mittal manoj if you can uh, switch on your video and uh, give your views on this today's uh, presentation manoj are you there okay i think manoj may not be uh, there so uh, uh, we have uh, yeah, we have many questions is manoj there yeah. okay uh, so we have many questions and a uh, lot of them have been answered already i will pick up few questions uh, from the uh, balance uh, which is not yet answered uh, one question is from uh, uh, vireshwara rao yellow guri will the pendulum base isolation system as shown in the video can take gravity loads of the whole building uh yes uh, the <coughs> pendulum devices or specifically all base isolation devices are designed to to sustain all of the exterior loads uh, in the building even if it's gravity or if even if the ULS maximum load conditions uh, are i mean the devices are designed according to carry those loads okay there is one interesting question by mr nishad kulkarni he is asking why base isolation systems are not recommended or proposed for bridges located in type 3 soft soils i mean type 3 soil he means soft soil uh yeah yeah uh in in very soft soils uh due to some <clears throat> also soil periods and structural periods there might be some co- coinciding with each other that might be risky also uh soft soils may uh may mean some uh amplification and uh, un- un- unknown amplifications of forces additionally another thing uh in very soft soils the risk in uh relative relative settlement things can can be present so that is also another another risk so in very soft soils especially Uh, in, in, in also our design code, if the soft soil is present, it is recommended to perform soil structure interaction during the nonlinear time history analysis. So it, it should be present. Okay. Uh, so there is one question from Dr. Uh, Sushil Kumar. Uh, please explain the seismic hazard analysis. Uh, non-linear time history analysis how can we use the outcome of the results in minimizing vibrations in the structure this is from dr shushil dhawan probabilistic uh, uh, seismic hazard analysis are used to determine the uh, earthquake uh, risk or or the design spectra of the of the specific site and it is done by seismologists mainly uh, i mean the details of that procedure i don't think it can be explained here in in a very short time it is a different uh, scientific area basically but what we use from that analysis is is the fact that we know the exact situation exact seismicity of our uh, construction site uh, so using that information we can design both the building and the base isolation devices also the time histories uh, obtained uh, in order to use in the design or structural analysis are obtained from that analysis i mean probabilistic seismic hazard assessment so uh, all the all of the design really depends on that okay so there is a question from mr uh, anvin joy anubin joy 
what is the effect of two sliding surfaces on base isolation pendulum on the basis of friction coefficient acceleration displacement etc uh, all the design of pendulum devices depend on on the sliding surfaces and the frictional behavior on those surfaces so if if you increase the axial load on the, on that surface or let's say axial pressure on that surface the friction coefficient decreases uh, and displacement is not really a factor here to determine the friction coefficient but it's a result more more of a more like a result of this of the friction coefficient so uh, maybe we can also consider velocity uh, as a as a factor to determine the friction coefficient because increasing velocity or increasing the uh, total um, sliding distance uh, there's a slight change like plus minus 5% change in the friction coefficient if if, if we should go into detail okay thank you thank you so there is an interesting question from mr mohit kapoor what is the most safest method of base isolator prototype test pairs and singular configuration both suggested by different manufacturers actually i think uh, the question refer is referring to rubber based devices because i know that on on rubber devices they put two of them on Opposite top of side. each other and they uh, test it at the same time uh, we we never do it with pendulums so okay. i think it doesn't make much difference in rubber devices i I don't oppose testing two, two devices at the same time. I think it should be, uh, it, sh it can be done. It, it doesn't have any problems for me, but for pendulums, it, it doesn't uh, apply. So we test one by one always. Okay, so there is a question from Professor Mahesh Tandon. What is the design life of these bearings? For tall buildings, they may be impossible to replace. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the design life, uh, there is no determined design life that we can we can consider because, uh, in terms of uh, earthquake performance or sliding distance, let's say these devices are designed to to sustain uh, at least three or four uh, maximum earthquakes. So let's say more than ten usual. Uh, earthquakes. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't have any specific uh, thing that, that can be said there, but as in terms of the material properties and the materials used uh, in these devices, uh, most of the parts components are structural steel or stainless steel. So if, uh, uh, if we consider all other steel buildings or structural steel approach, then we can say at least uh, it, 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 the service life or the uh, lifespan of uh, pendulum devices are at least uh, as long as the buildings. Okay. Okay. So um, I think there are a few more questions, but uh, we have already exceeded our time by more than 35 minutes uh, and actually i i have seen i have gone over almost all of the questions and there are some uh, replicates so okay i think uh, if if the other questions can be inspected by the original askers then <laughs> they can okay. find the replies <laughs> okay great so that means what you are saying is practically all the questions are answered maybe the repeat there, ones uh, so if we let's if say the participants <laughs> if the participants go through the answers, they will get the answer for their question as well. So, um, uh, uh, Manoj, are you there? Uh, give the closing remarks. President, Mr. President. Okay, he's not there. So, let me do the honors first and foremost. Let me uh, close this uh, very interesting uh, webinar, uh, which was very, very informative and very educative for all of us. I profusely thank our speakers of the day, uh, Mr. Yusuf Zahid and Mr. Urugan for such an excellent presentation. And I also thank all the uh, esteemed panelists 
who have given their insights and with shared their experience as well and uh, my thanks goes to the participants also today i saw more than uh, 200 participants uh, in the beginning now of course it has tapered down to 130 uh, so uh, i hope that this kind of dialogue between us uh, would continue and we will have more such uh, webinars or events or courses where we can you know exchange our uh, thoughts our ideas and also at the same time educate our uh, structural engineering fraternity thank you very much all of you and with this i uh, conclude this uh, particular webinar thank you thank you very thank much you. thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.